Hi, I'm Jan Callahan. A Norfolk woman has published a creative and engaging way for incarcerated parents and their children to communicate and strengthen the bond between them, even when they're unable to speak to each other face to face. Carolyn LaCroix is with the Norfolk Prisoner Reentry Council. She has uh, extensive experience working with e um, inmates and on a variety of levels and um, is here to talk about her experience and her dealings with the system and how she came up with this idea um, that has been able to reach out and, and grab some really um, great pieces from each individual and bring them together. And when you're talking about children and, and parents that are separated by something like a prison, that's very heavy, it's very traumatic for all parties involved, but the kids, we as, as the public, the general public don't always see um, people in prison as humans, as human beings, with families, with feelings and emotions, and they're just like we are. And that brings this home, does it not? It does, yes. it does. Um, Many of us, or many people in the public, get their idea of what a prison is like from television yeah. or from movies, and they're really sensationalized. When the truth of the matter is, they're human beings, just like you said, just like you and I. Um, I learned this when I was incarcerated um, eight, 20 years ago now. And one of the things that I saw was how families could not connect. And there's a lot of reasons. Um, when a mother goes to prison, perhaps the grandmother gets the children, and she is the primary caregiver, and most of our caregivers are on fixed incomes. So it costs to travel. The mm -hmm. institutions are not in your backyard. Right. Um, so it does cost to travel. Then there is, of course, the emotional piece for the children, not only when they get there to visit, but when they leave. And that can be pretty traumatic for them. Um, some people don't feel that children should visit their mother or their father while they're incarcerated, and others do. So to help bridge some of that, after I got out, I, um, well, my background was a film and TV producer. Um, so I thought I wanted to make a difference. I want to make a difference in the parent's life and in the children's lives especially. Research has shown uh, that the children of an incarcerated parent are six times more likely to get involved in the criminal justice system. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to go to prison. It could be probation, truancy. There could be a juvenile institution that they might get put in. But research has also shown that when there is a bond between the parent and the child, this is less likely. Um, so to that means, I uh, created a program, and it's called The Messages Project, where we go in and we film the mom or the dad sending a message home to the child. Along with that, we have books that we encourage the mom or the dad to read to the child, um, and that also is sent home. We don't insist that they read, but it's always nice. And mm -hmm. we get so much feedback from the caregivers and the children about one, for instance, um, said to or sent us a letter and she said, my granddaughter won't go to sleep until mommy reads to her every night. Another has said that they've seen such a significant change in the child as far as grades attitude, less fighting, less arguing, because now they know mom really didn't abandon me. It was nothing I did. These children carry guilt, some of them. It's um, if I hadn't have asked for, or if mm -hmm. I had been a better little boy or girl, or if I'd have made better grades, maybe mommy or daddy wouldn't have. So there's a lot that goes on with the children and the caregiver and the parent. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing I do want to say is these children are the silent victims of their parents' crime. They did nothing wrong, but a lot of times they get ostracized, and they get criticized, and they get made fun of, and 
a lot of times families ask them to keep it a secret. And then we're adding one more thing to these children that they right. have to deal with. We're asking them and, or telling them it's okay to tell a fib when it's not. So not being uh, feeling free to be open about what is going on. This does release a certain amount of inhibition for, it can anyway, for an incarcerated parent and a child. Um, my understanding is, in, at least with the videos and perhaps even with the book, um, the, the parent may actually apologize for the first time right. for something that landed them in, the, in prison in the first place or to admit to them that I was wrong I miss you, I love you, and the things that the child yearns to hear and can be very normal things for a child to hear in, another, in a different environment, but is, has, is getting the opportunity to because there's a, that wedge has been removed. Right. I created the book out of um, a desire to add another piece to the project. Um, not everybody in the institutions that we go to get a chance to do a video message. It's restricted. Um, we do between 50 and 65 a day. We do 14 institutions here in Virginia. We're in five other states. This past August we went international. We're now in Malawi. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted something else to help to work with. This is a book that is an interactive book. The pages are perforated um, so that the parent can send home pages to the children. <clears throat> There's written, ex they explain many things in there um, from this is not your fault to who you can talk to, um, what rules or laws that I broke, um, things that I would love for you to hear. But the biggest message in the whole book is that I love you. And I, that's huge. This is a good adjunct to any parenting program or it is a standalone mm -hmm. um, that the parent can do while they're sitting in, their, in the dorm or in their cell and mail mm -hmm. it back and forth. There's pictures for the children to color. There's questions in there for the children to ask. There's room in there for the parent to answer the question. That communication between the parent and the child is huge, and it is so important. Um, Using the time that they do have there in a productive way, I guess, is really yeah. what this is all about. Yeah. So why not take advantage of that time and use it to help either build, create, or restore a trust and, right. and loving feelings? And we know that a strong family bond helps reduce recidivism. Which is a very important factor. It yeah. is. Yeah. It is. Now, research has <clears throat> been done on the project. Um, the College of William and Mary and the University of Virginia have done an extensive research on the Messages Project itself. And we ha we're really pleased with the outcomes, just incredible outcomes. There was one thing <laughs> that we did find that the children don't want to see their mom or dad cry. And believe it or not, some of the guys, you're sitting there and these big, huge men, and you see this little tear running down their face. But what happens, Jan, is when they walk into that room where we film, that facade that they had on that other side of that door drops away, and their dad mm. or their mom. And there's just hundreds of stories I could tell you about how people have reconnected. Um, one woman in particular who did one hadn't heard from her children in 13 years. Her children were really angry at her and they have the right to be angry. And she did the video. She accepted the responsibility for what she had done. She apologized and she sent these wonderful messages to each one of her children on the video. And she got a letter from her oldest daughter. And that was the, the beginning of a rebond, uh, is the only way I know how mm -hmm. to put it. And they've started a relationship. It's not where it could be, but it is a start. And this woman has a lot more time to do. So it's a very positive piece. Mm -hmm. And very powerful. 
It is very powerful. Very powerful. Very yeah. powerful. You have mentioned some of these people, and um, I do want to point out that on um, the website, there are, you have access to some of these videos yes. that um, Carolyn has spoken of. And um, I'm sorry we don't have any here to show you, but I did have a chance to take a look at some of them, and they are amazing. I think that they, um, they will tell you more, just as they tell the children of these parents more, about the makeup of people and how we're all human. And, and the struggles of people it doesn't mean that they're, you know, suddenly not guilty of a crime. Right. However, they have human emotions and they have feelings and they have connections that are just as important to them as to anybody. And uh, you can see so much of that in um, the way these people speak. So you've, you've explained it beautifully to see it demonstrated. I strongly suggest you check out the website and learn more about the Messages Project, which is um, very multifaceted yeah. and, and widespread. But if you haven't uh, tapped into the community of people who are incarcerated, you may not be aware of it. But no, it is a beautiful thing. And it comes from someone who was observant enough to see and put herself in the shoes of others and say, this, this is really, really important. You know, one thing I want to add is I've heard from people well, if they loved their children, they wouldn't have done this. One of the things that I feel and I see is at the time of their crime, their lives were out of control mm -hmm. for most. And that didn't mean that they didn't love their children less. It just meant that their lives were out of control. Mm -hmm. And I think that speaks volumes. Um, and you want to remember, these children and these families are your neighbors. They're the people in your church. They're the people behind you in the grocery store. And they love their families. And without that family bond that we can help create, we are looking at higher recidivism rates. But we know, undoubtedly, and w through research, that a strong family bond does help to reduce recidivism. Perhaps this can be just one of the many things to help people see that. And also if uh, you have an organization or a group that may be mm -hmm. interested in purchasing um, this book or to take a look at um, the entire project, please uh, give Carolyn a call and she will talk to you and Absolutely. fill you in and be happy to do it. So. The phone number is up on the screen. A parent's message uh, is the name of the book. We have her email address and also the website for the messagesproject.org. And take a look at it. I encourage you to. It's um, very well done. And the videos will, you will not forget them. You will not forget them, I assure you. And uh, Carolyn, you, you spread. Um, a positive message about what public can often perceive as negative and we need much much more of that so thank you for well, thank you. taking the time to share what I know is a very special part of what you do thank you all right we'll see you again <laughs> okay I'm gonna take you up on that all right it's a deal <laughs> well we'll be right back with the latest on the new GED program yes it's new in a new way and how one local college is extending a helping hand to potential students who want to move up